Hello and welcome to the Pig and Whistle Tales from Azeroth. As always here at the Pig and Whistle Inn in Stormwind, I go through a variety of subjects with regards to World of Warcraft. So grab a bottle or a pint, sit back and enjoy. Today's subject we're going to be going over 9.1 and more specifically we're going to be going over the sort of balance changes, the class changes that are coming with PTR or on, that are currently on the PTR and are in 9.1 PTR at the moment. Obviously these can be subject to change but usually they'll stick with it and give it to live servers and then maybe look at balancing it a little bit after that with maybe hot fixes or like 9.1.5 etc. So let's get into it. So with the 9.1 PTR, obviously there's a load of stuff that's coming with it. New zone, new mounts, new raid, etc. But we're going to be looking at the talents. There's some that just got a bit tweaked in terms of their like cooldown. Some got tweaked in terms of damage. There's new talents. There's loads of new covenant stuff. There's loads of covenant things uh, to do with like legendaries. But we're starting off with the druid and more specifically the balanced druid. You got a few uh, changes to the talents here. So New Moon now has a 20 second recharge time instead of 25. Not bad, you get a full moon every minute pretty much instead of every minute 15. So, you know, can be useful. Along that same line, that level 60 line, or level 50 line, sorry, uh, Solstice now causes shooting stars to fall 200% more often. This is instead of 300%. So... The sort of brick because a lot of people use solstice or fury of a loon i personally like fury of a loon as it generates a lot of astral power some people go for solstice it really depends on your perf personal preference um solstice i have been using in pve a lot more but this kind of brings it in line with new moon they kind of want new moon to just not be you know useless in regards so they want to sort of like try and bring it all into the same power level. Stellar Drift, which is a talent, has been redesigned. So Starfall damage is increased by 25% and allows you to cast while moving uh, when Starfall is active, but it has a 15 second cooldown. So the Starfall being active is a bit weird. Um, like the damage increase is nice, but rarely you'll be pressing stuff or unless it's like a very big pack in like a PvE situation. This doesn't really affect PvP at all. You're not going to be using this talent at all in PvP. You'd have to be a bit crazy to do so. So maybe there's some niche uses in terms of PvE. Maybe on fortified weeks where you're doing uh, pulls. Or maybe even tyrannical weeks where you're doing bigger pulls. Therefore you'd get more uptime and more use out of the starfall damage. But who knows? Uh, the free starfall from uh, Oneth's Clear Vision, the legendary from the Rune Carver, ignores the Stellar Drift talent uh, or starfall cooldown. So basically, uh, with the legendary, obviously, if you've used uh, the Stellar Drift and you've got a 15 second cooldown on your starfall, uh, you proc a starfall from this legendary, it won't. Or like it will ignore the 15 second cooldown so you can press that starfall pretty much. Which is very good. That makes the um, legendary very good. Makes it very good. Uh, Balance of all things legendary. Now grants 24% increased critical st strike chance. Was 40. And it decreases by 3% every 1 second. Was 8% 8, 8 every 1 second. For 5 seconds it decreased. So kind of a nerf here at the higher end. Obviously, you get more more crit throughout the time that you have it on, but you're losing a massive burst window as soon as you proc an eclipse. So there can be good and bad things to this, but I generally see this as a nerf overall because you want massive burst damage in PvP. Uh, PvE again, you can move on to Oneth's Clear Vision for the Starfall. You can uh, sort of do a AOE build with that. So PvE, this isn't really the worst thing to happen, but for PvP, this does hit Balanced Druid quite hard. Moving on to Mage, and more specifically Fire Mage. Flame Strike damage has been reduced up, reduced by 
very straightforward. Flame Patch, a talent, and its damage is reduced by 10% as well. This is a Fire Strike uh, talent, so it increases, or it puts a patch on the floor after your Fire Strike and deals ticking damage. Kindling, which is a talent, cooldown reduction for combustion reduced to 1 second was 1.5. So every time you get a crit, um, it reduces your combustion by 1.5 seconds. It's now 1 second. And this is going to matter quite a bit. Because uh, that 1.5 second, obviously fire mages are built around crits, so you're getting crits quite often. That will give combustion another 20 second or cooldown, I'd say. You get about a good like chunk out of that 0.5 seconds just from getting crits and stuff. Um, Infernal Cascade, which is a conduit, its fire damage bonus is reduced by 20%. And I believe this is a really good one. This is like consecutive crits or like fire blast crits, etc. So it's really good that they've sort of tuned this down as fire did have quite a big punch, you know, when you press that combust. For priests, we got a few or one thing for each um, specialization. So for disc, you have spirit shell talent. Its cooldown is increased to 90 seconds instead of 60 seconds. Very straightforward. Holy symbol of hope has been redesigned. It bolsters the moral or the morale of party or raid members within forty yards. Uh, they each recover sixty seconds of cooldowns on major defensive abilities, and they re regain twelve percent of their missing mana over five seconds. Now that in a raid is insane. Sixty seconds on a major cooldown or a major defensive ability. That is really... 60 seconds, my only defensive ability, apart from bear form, is bark skin. And bark skin's a minute cooldown, it's just a straight damage reduction, a 20% damage reduction. So I just get an instant bark skin if they channel this, or depending on if they class it as a major defensive ability. That's really good though, that is really good. You'd obviously use it for the mana, but the 60%, 60 second recu reduced cooldown is just very nice, you know, baked in to the ability. Shadow. Uh, oh my god. Dissonant Echoes? Dissonant Echoes, I think. Come to it. Now grants 20% increased Void Bolt damage. It was 35, so there's a 15% nerve, which, you know, nearly half of the Conduit, which is going to really hit Shadow Priests hard. Shadow Priests are... Slowly but surely coming to the forefront of PvP and PvE actually. There's a little bit of PvE action for them. But mainly PvP is, you know, really going to hit hard. For rogues, uh, the shield from uh, Cloak in Shadows conduit is now 50% larger. It lasts 4 seconds. It previously had no duration. And no longer decays while the rogue is out of stealth. So you probably... This is the shield that basically lets rogues stay in stealth when they have dots on them and stuff. So to have it at four seconds, it gives the rogue a little bit of time to run away in PvP situations. And uh, they'll still be brought out of stealth possibly by the ticking dots like after the shield is gone. So it gives uh, the rogue a chance to get away, but it also gives the... Uh, enemy a chance to you know find them and catch up to them not allow them to re-stealth again uh, Warlock you got a, a few things for affliction and a couple things for destruction or one thing for destruction Dark Pact's talent uh, this is a talent for all specializations uh, additional absorb shield has been increased by 216% really weird number not sure why the 216 is needed but Sack, sack pack as it was called or it was called sacrificial pack i'm pretty sure but dark pack big shield you know it does a certain percent of your health and turns it into a shield so 216 percent of that is very chunky that is a very good defensive ability to be honest if used in, at the right timing in a pvp situation even in a pve you know that could save you from maybe some mythic uh, mechanic that you have not moved out of or you've accidentally forgotten about stuff like that for destruction this one's nice and straightforward chaos bulk damage is increased by 10 percent very straightforward nice little buff there to destruction affliction warlock uh, malefic rapture uh, damage has been reduced by 18 percent 
the malefic rapture is when you've got all of your dots on the character and basically you press this button and depending on how many dots you have on that character it deals a certain amount of damage pretty much so if you do have one dot on the character it will do 1000 damage two dots 2000 damage you get the idea uh, agony to uh, compensate for the malefic rapture uh, Agony's damage has been increased by 20% so make sure you're decursing that if you've ever got it on you in a PvP situation. Shadow Embrace now lasts 16 seconds, it was 12 seconds and can only be applied to one target at a time. Not too sure about that one in all honesty. Uh, focused uh, Malignance or Malignancy Conduit, its effectiveness reduced by 53%, that's huge. That's a massive nerf, apparently they didn't like that one. And uh, the last one, which has me absolutely loving life, uh, Sacralash's Dark Strike. The legendary has been redesigned. So corruption damage is now increased by 25%. It was 15%. And each time corruption deals damage, it extends the duration of all of your curses active on the target by two seconds. Uh, and what this legendary originally was, it was... Uh, Corrupted targets movement speed slowed by 50% and uh, Corruption is an instant damage over time effect that you can just put on a target and suddenly they're slowed by 50% I'm a druid, so I don't necessarily feel the effects of this I still do even though I'm like constantly shape-shifting in and out forms But if you're a priest, you can't really move if you're a shaman, you're not having fun if you're a warrior any sort of melee cleave you are really not having fun with this damn Warlock uh, Legendary. So I think everyone will be happy to see that go out in 9.1. Apart from them, you know, pesky Affliction Warlocks. Um, for the Covenants, there's a few new things that are happening to the Covenants. I'll be going back to um, PvP talents later. They'll be just down the line a bit. So new Covenant uh, campaign chapters, of course. There's 40 new Renown levels to sink your teeth into. Loads of uh, cosmetics and stuff will come with it. Uh, there's new Soulbind tiers. So all existing Soulbinds uh, now have four new rows. Uh, three new Conduit slots. One Potency, one uh, Endurance and one Finesse. Two new uh, traits and one Kappa trait is called. So like a final trait. One that you can, um, like one right at the bottom. Because obviously it splits into two and then goes back into the one uh, tree. Uh, for Kyrian, uh, these are a few things for like um, Covenant. So Kyrian, the Soul Steel Clamps, which is from Mechanicos, now reduces the duration of uh, stun and in-cap effects by 20%. It was 30% originally. Uh, sparking Drift Globe Core, which is from Mechanicos again. Its cooldown increased to 1 minute was 45 and now triggers at 30% health was 35. So you got that little bit extra wiggle room and this is the stun I believe. So a stun every 45 seconds when you're going to get low is kind of annoying. Not good fun. For Necrolord, Sulfuric Emission, em, emission uh, Fear Duration has been reduced to 3.5 seconds, it was 4.5, so a nice second off of that for the Fear. And for Venthyr, the familiar, uh, oh my god, some of these words, I swear to god, it just doesn't register in my mind correctly. Predisiments, predisiments, uh, yeah, familiar predisiments. Um, now reduces incoming interrupter, uh, snare and root effects by 20% and it was 25. So a few tweaks to the uh, Kyrian Necro Lord and Venthyr traits and stuff there, but nothing too major. Dungeons and Raids, obviously the new dungeon or the new raid, sorry, Sanctum of Domination is going to be able to be tested on the 16th of April, which is the day that this, uh, this podcast does come out. So definitely keep an eye on that. Definitely keep an eye on Twitch because most people might be streaming on it on Twitch. And there's a lot of lore in this uh, raid. So definitely keep an eye out on that if you are interested in the lore side of things. A um, couple things with items and rewards. The Ordnance Trinket now puts other unused trinkets on a 40 second cooldown instead of a 20 second cooldown. So, you know, a little bit of a 
extra waiting period between popping another trinket, but you got to do what you got to do. I think this saves people from overlapping two trinkets in one fight, because I'm not sure how long this trinket lasts for, to be honest. So I'm guessing that people would pop this trinket, pop another trinket, and then absolutely blast a boss, blast a, a pack of mobs, etc. So it's to refrain from that happening. So now we're going back to the talents and uh, classes, and we're looking at PvP talents and things. And they've really shaken some things up, and we'll get to them shaking it up right now. So new PvP talent, Shroud of Winter. This is for a th Frost Death Knight. Not too sure how it works yet. I need to go on the PTR and really check it out when I can. And uh, they actually removed Heartstop Aura as a PvP talent. Heartstop Aura was an insane talent for Death Knights. What it did was basically make your cooldowns, you know, take 30% longer to get back. So if it's a 30 second cooldown, it now becomes a 40 second cooldown. Stuff like that. If it's a 3 second cooldown, it's a 4 second cooldown. And it really did affect you. In the longevity of games, if a Death Knight was close enough to you for this Heartstop Aura to be, you know, hitting you, you're not having fun. You can't press your buttons as often as you think. And muscle memory, like, and just, yeah, muscle memory basically says to you, okay, this cooldown will be ready. It's been 15 seconds. Oh, wait, no, i got to wait 20 seconds instead now. So it's really intriguing that they've removed that. I'm not sure why. For Mage, you've got quite a few things that are spicing things up here. So obviously Fire Mage have been very, very dominant and at the forefront of uh, PvP. We've seen no Arcane Mages in high level play and you've seen very few Frost Mages in high level play. So Kleptomania, a PvP talent that every Mage ran, it basically makes your spell still steal everything from the target in one go instead of one thing at a time because that way it guarantees you like some really big cooldowns that the mage might have popped etc but that is now arcane only kleptomania uh, damper magic has been removed as a pvp talent and damper magic basically reduces reduced the damage of um damage over time effects on you magical damage over time effects so Warlocks are probably quite happy with that. Uh, if you're looking at fire, they have a new uh, PvP talent called Ring of Fire. Don't play with fire, kids. You definitely don't want to burn yourself. But what this does is basically it's like Ring of Frost, but it deals 24% of your max health. That's it, if you like get hit by it, I'm pretty sure. Control Burn uh, has been redesigned. Ignite deals 100% more damage, while Combustion is not active. So... What this does is basically it gives uh, mages some consistent damage outside the combust window. So what it was, was mages had nothing. They barely had any sort of damage outside combust. When they pressed combust, they just skyrocketed. You might get one, like 100 to 0 within a couple global cooldowns. It's ridiculous. So they're trying to even it out so that if you think of it as a line or like a chart you've got like really high damage really low damage on this chart you're just at the low damage you press combust you're skyrocket you've gone past this chart's top and then combust goes and you're at the bottom again it's that sort of thing there's no in between so they're trying to even this out so that you know there's a middle ground and that they're doing consistent damage but when combust is active you know it pushes it up by like 50%, that sort of thing, because you want to know that you're pressing a cooldown, that kind of thing. Uh, World of Flames, PvP talent, now causes Flame Strike to reduce the cast time of Flame Strike by 50%. Uh, it was 1.25 seconds originally, and it increases its damage by 30% for 3 seconds. Uh, it was 20% permanently. So a little buff. I don't think you'll be using World in Flames though, to be honest. You, you're never really using flame strike at all unless it's to uh, stop a drink and even then you're not going to use it to kill that person while they're drinking are you so looking towards frost now and this is the one that got me new pvp talent ice wall and this is intriguing because they've never ever done anything like this i believe in the history of wow so ice wall is what it suggests you put up a wall of ice 
And what it does is it actually blocks terrain. Now, so you can block line of sight with this. So there can be some magnificent plays that you can do with this. But this is the first ability that they've ever introduced where it can block line of sight. You can basically put up a part of the map for yourself. You can block the healer from their DPS. You can block them like melee in a corner. You can, oh, it, there's so many potential things that you could do, but it could be amazing. Like if they nail this talent perfectly, then I think that this could really change it for like frost mages. Um, the wall does have health and you can destroy it from the enemy's perspective. It's 40% health for, or it's 40% of the mage's total health. That's how much the uh, wall has. So you can destroy it, but this can be real, like a real game changer, this talent, if they get it right for frost mages. Uh, moving on, a few tweaks here and there. Frostbolt now deals 100% more damage in PvP combat. It was 15%. So they just turn the scale right up on the Frost Mage damage a little bit there. Deep Shatter, it's a PvP talent, now increases the damage of Frostbolt by 75% on, tar on frozen targets. It was originally 150. So once again, they're doing this thing where they want to even out Mage damage. You've got really high spikes and really low sort of output, like when they're not uh, bursting. So they just want to even this out for all Mages, I suspect. Uh, Burst of Cold, PvP talent, now increase the damage of Kona Cold by 600%, this was 400%. Kona Cold being a, an iconic uh, mage ability, I don't really see much use of this, it might push it over the edge and might be used to like finish a target off if you've got nothing else left really, but you know, you probably look to take something else over this. They're looking at Monk and more specifically Mistweaver a lot. So you got three new talents, three new PvP talents. Peace Weaver, uh, Dematerialized, Dematerialized, sorry, oh my lord, that, uh, that was dumb. And uh, Thunderous T. So I'm not too sure about all of these. Dematerialize, I would imagine, is a very good defensive ability. It seems like it would be something where you phase out of reality and it's like reduces damage by 50% or like an immunity. It's like three seconds where you can't be hit, that kind of thing. Thunderous T, I would imagine, is uh, possibly a mana regen thing because Mistweavers do struggle with mana regen quite a bit. And they probably, they, they have good healing output, they have good defensives and stuff, but they just really struggle on mana, more so than any other class, I'd say, including Priest. So I'd think that they would try and reprimand that a little bit, and the Thunderous team might be what, you know, does that for them. Um, not too sure about Peace Weaver, to be honest with you. That one is just a wait and see. Uh... Counter -react, ma counteract magic, sorry, uh, has been redesigned. So each hostile magic effect removed from the target increases the healing they receive by 2% for 10 seconds. And this stacks up to 10 times. So if you're against an affliction warlock, it might be useful to take this. Because after you've dispelled, you get a little bit of healing increase on that target. So it might be very useful, might not. Refreshing Breeze uh, has been redesigned. So healing done by Soothing Mist increases the healing of your next Expel Harm on the target during the uh, during the channel. And it causes it to dispel one magic poison or disease effect. So this is just sort of, again, I think very much into going against a Warlock. Your Soothing Mist, Expel Harm will obviously take away a little magic effect. And, uh, you know, it stops a little bit of their ramp up damage, so not too bad. Eminence uh, uh, has been redesigned. So Transcendence uh, Transfer transfer can now be cast while stunned. And its cooldown is increased by 15 seconds uh, if it is cast while not stunned. Holy sh... I didn't read that one before. Uh, that's insane. Because a monk can be switched to very easily as they have no sort of pain suppression if they get stunned. They have no sort of bubble, they have no bark skin, iron bark, unlike all the other healing classes. But this, 
changes a lot because they can just port back out of line of sight when they are stunned and that is insanely huge for them that is a massive buff to them and i wouldn't i wouldn't think that you'd ever change out that pvp talent in all honesty because that seems very very good and the surging mist pvp talent has been removed so goodbye to that but that eminence one is amazing that is probably what will push win or monks over the edge in terms of like healing. Uh, with Priest, you've got a new talent, Improved Master Spell. I believe this is just 15 seconds reduced cooldown, uh, cooldown and it also uh, uh, reduced mana cost. There's not much use to this, I don't think. There was one instance where I think it was brought up to be like you can Master Spell every trap or something for a Shadow Priest as it lines up with trap cooldown. But I think that's about it. I don't think there's much else to it. For Shadow, Lasting Plague PvP talent has been removed. So goodbye to that talent. And there's nothing else on Priest. Uh, for Rogue, Mark of the Master Assassin uh, power. This is the legendary. Its du uh, duration has been reduced by 40% in PvP combat. So quite a hefty nerf there. Assassination gets a new PvP talent. Hemotoxin, not too sure what it does, it seems like it would be um, maybe like a static effect where it would either be reducing mobility, it would be reducing, you know, car speed, healing done, something like that. And Neurotoxin, PvP talent, has been removed. For Warlocks, you get a new PvP talent, Shadow Rift, which sounds very cool, not too sure how it works, but, you know, get to see it very soon. And uh, for Affliction, Soul Shatter, PvP talent, has been removed. So uh, they seem to be removing a lot of uh, talents, I've noticed, and bringing in new ones in. So, they're, you know, chopping and changing, really trying some stuff out. For Demonology, a new PvP talent, Fell Obelisk, which sounds really cool. It seems like it would be, um, it would just be something that you put in the middle and it would have like a ring around it. If you're close to it, you take increased damage, that kind of thing. Uh, cool Fell Lord PvP talent now deals 200% of the caster's spell power per swing. It was 5% of the target's maximum health. And um, the cooldown of the ability is increased to 2 minutes. It was 1.5. So 200% of caster's spell power could be huge. You could just stack spell power and this thing could absolutely chunk, possibly. So just keep an eye on that. Don't Definitely don't get caught out by that. And Singe, Ma Singe Magic... Uh, has been removed also for destruction they have a new pvp talent as well bonds of fell sounds like a root to me in all honesty uh chaos bell now deals 40 percent more damage in pvp combat it was originally 15 percent, so a nice little buff for chaos bolt there not to mention the 10 percent buff just generally like when i said it earlier Instead, it's got like an extra 40% locked onto it in a PvP scenario. And the Focused Chaos PvP talent has been removed. The Focused Chaos talent, I remember, I remember this one. This one actually, basically, you can't use it to hit two targets, Chaos Bolt, but it just increased the damage of Chaos Bolt to one target. So definitely not fun to get hit by a big, chunky Chaos Bolt. Uh, a few things... Rune carving, new rune carving powers for Death Knight, Druid, Warrior, Mage uh, have new powers on the PTR currently. Some existing powers have been updated, uh, like the Druid ones I know have been updated. So definitely check them out. And obviously you have the new uh, zone, such as Corthia, the new assaults and stuff like that on the PTR at the moment. But I'm going to go over everything else on the PTR next week i just wanted to specifically have a look at all of the balance changes that they're bringing uh, to the classes not necessarily the uh content that they're bringing to 9.1 that definitely deserves its own podcast as there is a lot in it and it might even be over two podcasts because there seems to be a lot that they're changing but that is going to wrap it up for this week guys thank you all very much for listening as always, check out the social media's uh, 
uh, for Pig and Whistle, then can be found on the website. And do check out the Pig and Whistle Patreon. There's been a little overhaul there, so go check it out. If you feel like, you know, helping the podcast even more, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you all very much as always, and I'll see you next week, guys. Go, Valor friend. Goodbye, all.